English one on one. I must say a big shout out to the young ladies from St. Andrew High School, right? I'm I want to say I was very pleased with the, our interaction recently and also your suggestion that I should post information on communication studies. And here you have it, okay? So we're gonna be starting with a specimen paper, 2017, and we are going to be looking at each item. And of course, we are going to be treating it as a diagnostic test. I trust that you'll find this presentation beneficial. May God bless you. communication studies specimen paper. I trust that you will do well on this paper. It will tell you, of course, where you're at in terms of your readiness, readiness for the examination. Of course, upcoming examination, you have a few more months before you actually sit the examination. And I know that you will be okay. I believe that you are going to excel. All you have to do is stick with us as we go through paper one. God bless you. Instruction for the communication specimen paper is um, as follows. So Caribbean Examination Council, Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination, Communication Studies, Specimen Paper, Paper 01. That's paper one. And it's one hour and 30 minutes, okay? So the instructions read, this paper consists, this test consists of 45 items divided into two sections, A and B. For section A, based on a communication extract, consists of seven questions. The extract, which is not included in the question booklet, will be read to you twice, but you will be allowed two minutes to look at the questions, okay? So the questions will be read to you there. The extract or passage will be read to you twice and you will be given, of course, time to jot down any information that you may have, right, when the reading is done. To look at the questions before the extract is read. So you get an opportunity to actually view the questions before the extract is actually read to you. Then section B consists of 38 questions. And so each question based on the information given. Scrolling down. Oh, Lord. 
I do have to retake that, do that over. All right, the dogs are barking again. Dogs are barking. All right. In addition to the test booklet, you will be you will have an answer sheet. Each item in this test has four suggested answers: letter A, B, C, and D. Read each item you are about to answer and decide which choice is best. On your answer sheet. Find a number which corresponds to your item and shade the space, having the same letter as the answer you have chosen. Look at the sample item below. Sample item, which of the following is an advantage of, of the questionnaire as a data collection method? Is it A, ease of ad admission, B, immediacy of feedback, C, openness of discussion. D, opportunity for clarification. And the sample answer here is A. The best answer for, to this item is ease of admission. So A has been shaded. If you want to change your answer, erase it completely before you fill in your new choice. And of course, when you are told to begin, turn the page and work as quickly and as carefully as you can. If you cannot answer an item, go to the next one. You may return to this item later. Do not turn this page until you are told to do so. It means therefore that do not engage in a, um, an activity that will cause person to view, think that you're cheating or getting an head start, right? Just like if you're in a race, um, right? If you if you get an head start, then you will be disqualified, okay? So it's the same thing that applies here. So it means therefore that you're going to listen to the invigilator's instruction carefully and you're going to follow those instructions that are given. So, section A, items one to seven, instruction. You will hear and extract, it will be read twice. Listen carefully before answering the questions based on the extract. And so you'll get an opportunity to view the questions as was said in the instructions earlier. So what is the main idea in the extract? Is it A, fisherman goes fishing in the dawn? Is it B, a fisherman goes fishing as soon as morning comes, dawn in its different aspect, quickly gives way to the morning, dawn in its different aspect is as quick as a thrown harpoon. Question two, what detail supports the main idea of the extract? Is it one, a harpoon of light, two, a fling east net, Three, black shapes of boat. And is it the answer A, one and two, B, one, two, and one and three, C, two and three, or D, one, two, and three. So, you know, getting an opportunity again to view all the questions and then the extract will be read to you twice. Which of the following best expresses the purpose of the extract? Is it A, to show how quickly morning comes? B, to describe Dorn as a fisherman who goes to sea? C, to compare the rays of the morning, the rays, sorry, of the morning sun to the fisherman's harpoon? Or D, to capture aspect of Dorn, dawn through images? associated with fishermen. Question five. Question four, what is the literary device used in the, the darkness squats upon the sleeping land? Is it A, contrast, B, hyperbole, C, personification, or D, transferred epitza? Right, and you'll find that some of these questions, 
even before the extract is ready, you might have an idea or a clue as to what the answer is, okay? Then um, question four is, a, is one of those, all right? Which of the following literary devices are used in the extract? Now for this one, you'd have to definitely hear the reading of the extract in order to know, which, know the ones that you hear and the ones that are excluded. So one, personification, two, simile, three, metaphor. Is it A, one and two, B, one and three, C, two and three only, or D, one, two and three? Then question six, which of the following best captures the poet's method of discourse? Is it narration of an event? B, description of a scene? C, provision of information? Or D, presentation of an argument? Then question seven, which of the following comments best shows that the stage, the black shapes of boats, Lie onch like nesting turtles is effectively used. Is it A, it evokes a sense of admiration in the listener, B, it visually captures one aspect of the dawn, or C, it compares the onch state of the boats to the turtles that are nesting, or D, it shows that in darkness, boats can be mistaken. Is taken for nesting turtles, okay? All right, so we're going to hear now. Have you listened to the reading of the extract? And so the extract will be read twice. Dawn is a fisherman. Dawn is a fisherman, is our pool of light, poised for a throw, so swiftly morning comes. The darkness squats upon the sleeping land like a flung cast net and the black shapes of boats lie unch like nesting turtles on the flat calm of the sea. And this poem is written by Raymond Burroughs. I'll read it again for you. Dawn is a fisherman, is our pool of light, Poise for a throw. So swiftly morning comes, the darkness squats upon the sleeping land like a flung cast net, and the black shapes of boats lie onch like nesting turtles on the flat calm of the sea. And this poem is written by Raymond Burroughs. Now, you will get an opportunity. So they say here, after you have read the extract the first time, pause a few seconds and then say to the candidate, I shall now read the extract a second time, right? So you heard it twice and I'm going to read it now a third time for you, but of course it will be read only twice, okay? Dawn is a fisherman. Is our pool of light poised for a throw? So swiftly morning comes, the darkness squats upon the sleeping land like a flung cast net, and the black shapes of boats lie onch like nesting turtles on the flat calm of the sea. By Raymond Burroughs. Did you get all of that? Okay. So you will now return to the questions. Questions one to seven. What is the main idea in the extract? So question one, question one, what is the main idea in the extract? Is it A, a fisherman goes fishing in the dawn? B, a fisherman goes fishing as soon as morning comes. C, dawn in its different aspect quickly come, gives way to the morning. Or D, dawn in its different aspect is as quick as a thrown harpoon. 
Have you figured it out? Is it A, is it B, is it C, or is it D? Question two. What details support the main idea of the extract? Is it one, harpoon of light? Two, a flung cast net? Three, black shapes of boats? Is it the answer A, one and two? B, two and three? C, two and three? Or D, one, two, and three. Okay, very good, excellent. I, I know you're doing well, right? Question three. Which of the following best expresses the purpose of the extract? Is it A, to show how quickly morning comes? Or B, B, to, to describe Dawn as a fisherman who goes to sea, or C, to compare the rays, the rays, the rays, sorry, the rays of the morning sun to a fisherman's harpoon, or D, to capture aspect of dawn, of dawn through images associated with fishermen. Question four. Question four, what is the literary device used in the darkness squats upon the sleeping land? Is it A, contrast, B, hyperbole, C, personification, or D, transferred epithet? Question five, which of the following literary devices are used in the extract, is it one, personification, two, simile, three, metaphor? Is the answer A, one and two only? B, one and three only? C, two and three only? Or D, one, two and three? Have you figured it out? <laughs> Just that you have, All right? Question six. Which of the following best captures the poet's method of discourse? Is it A, narration of an event? B, description of a scene? C, provision of information? Or D, preparation, presentation, sorry, of an argument? Pre presentation of an argument. Question seven, which of the following comments best shows that the phrase, the black shapes of the boats lie unch like nesting turtles is effectively used? A, it evokes a sense of admiration in the listener. B, it visually captures one aspect of dawn. C, it compares the unch state of the boats to turtles that are nesting. Or D, it shows that in darkness, boats can be mistaken for nesting turtles. So is it A, B, C, or D? All right, so check your answers, go over them, questions one to seven, and then let's see how you did on the first part of this specimen paper. So now students that you have completed the, the section, section A of Um, in the early morning here, we're not looking at dawn as a person, but in this case, we're talking about the early aspect of the morning, dawn. So dawn in its different aspect quickly gives way, right, to the morning, all right? So dawn is a fisherman, so you can see all the devices here. Dawn is a fisherman, okay, right? So 
you decide what that um, device is. Okay, let's look at it. Explain question two. Did you get that answer? Did you ever did you get answer one C? If you did, place it in the comment section below. Right? Very good. If you did. is when you give human characteristics to inanimate or non-living things and so the character is the human quality of sleeping is given to darkness squats upon the, the land okay and as a result of that we know it is personification did you get it correct if you did leave my comment in the comment section yeah you're doing well continue to do so Personification, two simile, three metaphor. Is it? And so we saw personification, we saw metaphor, and we actually saw simile being used. And so all three devices were used, hence the answer is D. And so when you listen to the extract being read, note the devices, right? Jot down the devices that you hear because chances are you'll get a question like this one, okay? of a scene and I'm sure you were able to identify or hear the descriptive elements so this is which of the following best captures the points method of discourse not a narration of an event the description of a scene is more in keeping based on the extra that was read you saw all the description descriptive terms and all the as um, the scene that was being described okay dawn is a fisherman Okay, so we're getting the, the fisher, like a sea, seashore um, scenery, and also fishermen um, at sea. Okay, so it's a description of a scene. Like, like, 
nesting turtles is effectively used. So it visually captures one aspect of dawn. So you're seeing the seashore, as I mentioned, and you're seeing maybe the boats being overturned. And so they seem like unched, unched turtles, right? Because the fishermen, right? Of course, you know, right? So would have turned over their boats, right? Um, and so they're resting because it's early morning, very early. Right, so dawn is a fisherman, and so the fisherman goes out very early, right? And it is the same thing that dawn approaches very early in the morning, right? Just that you've got that. Now, how well did you do? How did you do? Did you get seven out of seven, six out of seven, five out of seven, four out of seven, or three out of seven? How well did you do on section A? Let's hear. Place your comment in the comment section. Okay. All right. So we're going to now look at section B of the specimen paper. I trust that you did well in on section A and that many of you got seven if out of seven, if not six out of seven or five out of seven, okay? But we don't want you to get below five out of seven. All right, so sharpen your listening skills, all right? And practice as many activities. Allow your parents, your peers to read extract to you and, you know, answer questions that are given based on their readings and so on. All right, so we're looking now at section B and section B, of course, comprises of 38 questions. And so we're going to be reading items 8 to 11. And of course, you know that section B will look at all three areas of the communication studies, okay? Right? And so the instruction reads, read the following scenario carefully and then answer items 8 to 11. Uncle Jerry's tease fundraising. That's fundraising. Why do some school fundraisers and other fundraising products, product, projects fail to reach their goal? In many cases, it comes down to the products. We have all been there in a position where we feel obl obligated to buy a fundraising product because it's for a good cause, even though in reality, we will never use or enjoy that product. However, when you offer products that have broad-based appeal that buyers are actually enthusiastic to purchase, your chances of success skyrocket. At Uncle Jerry's Tease Fundraising, we are proud to carry fundraisers products that people will be happy to buy, not only because they will be contributing to a good cause, but because they actually like what they are getting. Retrieved and adopted from http www.unclecherrystees.com. All right, so question eight. So you would have discovered what type of writing this is. I won't say anything. All right, so let's get into it. The questions that it. Let me scroll up a little. It's going down. So question eight says, which of the following expresses the meaning of the broad base appeal in lines five? Is it A, popular requests, B, intense demand, C, far reaching popularity, right? Or D, wide, widespread attractiveness. Question nine. The purpose of Uncle Jerry's Tease fundraising message is to, is it A, to entertain the online reader, B, supply information on fundraising, C, convince readers to buy his products, or D, to persuade readers to go into fundraising. Question 10, which of the following factors is not true about the extract? 
Is it A, it uses rhetorical language? B, it is a primary source of data? C, the writer seems to be knowledgeable about fundraisers? Or D, Uncle Jerry's T's fundraising claims to carry products, right, that people will buy. Question 11, which of the following literary devices is used in the title of the extract? Is it A, a pun, B, metaphor, C, accidents, or D, oxymoron. So you will find that it is very important that you know your devices. Not only do you know the definition of these devices, but you should be able to give examples of them and you should be able to identify them in any given extract, okay? Right? So it's important that you know them. And of course, for question 10, it's important that you will go back to the passage or extract and then, of course, eliminate the one that is those that are there. You'd out, you delete those, right? And then the one that is not there because it says which of the following factors is not true about the extract, okay? Right. So you'll have to pay close attention to the not in that question. So we will now look at items 12 to 15. The instruction reads, read the following scenario carefully and then answer items 12 to 15. You notice this one is very short, very brief, okay? There's a lot of questions on it, right? So it's compact. In our private practice, Dr. Pear, realizes that many of our young patients need treatment for overbite problems. She would like to research the causes of these problems. Question 12, which of the following pairs of methods would be most suitable for gathering primary data for this research? Is it a questionnaire and interview? B, observation and focus group. C, questionnaire and content analyst. Or D, document analyst and focus group. So you'd have to read it again and get into what is, what is most suited, right? Most suitable for gathering primary data. All right, question 13. Which of the following is an advantage that the questionnaire as a data collection method would offer Dr. Pear? Is it A, ease of adm admission? B, immediacy of feedback? C, openness of discussion? D, opportunity for clarification? And in question 14, which of the following data sources would be suitable for the research? One, young patients. Two, parents of young patients. C, three, sorry, classmates of, of or young patients. So is the answer A, one and two only? B, one and three only? Okay, you're seeing some similar, similarity in terms of question. C, two and three only, or D, one, two, and three. Okay, right, good. Like what you see, question 15. Which of the following would Dr. Pear do in order to, of course, to gener generalize the findings of her research? Is it A, use a small sample size? B, use a representative sample? C, limit the demographic scope, or D, use only secondary sources of data. So again, that, that small passage, a short passage, I should say, is very compact. All right, those are the questions, 12 to 15. So we're scrolling down now. You'd have seen it, the area that it covers, right? So remember that the um, items 8 to 
45 will cover all three areas or sections of the communication studies. So we're going to item 16 to, and to 19. Read the following excerpt carefully and then answer item 16 to 19. Heat up, eat up, Mrs. Jackson said. I don't have no fridge. So if we don't heat everything, it won't spoil. The word is heat, is eat, eat, mama, not heat. Nasa corrected her mother sternly. Mrs. Jackson looked at her with pride. You know, Nasa, Nastasia, Nastasia, Always come first or second in her class. The only thing her teachers say is that she talk too much. The child tightened, her face scornful and angry as she looked at her mother. Mrs. Jackson smiled gently and several emotions went across her face. Andrew, watch her, knowing she loved her mother but was ashamed of her. She too had felt that way until her mother died when she was 16, three years ago. But her reason had been different. Mrs. Jackson didn't seem the type who would drink white rum like a man and go to the bars where she was the only woman. Angela closed her eyes briefly. We have decorated your house nicely, Mrs. Jackson, she said. Have you lived here long? Adopted from Alicia Mackenzie, Nastasia, Satellite City, Longman, 1992. Question 16. What is Nastasia's attitude to the language variety used by her mother? Is it A, anger, B, admiration, C, acceptance, or D, indifference? Question 17. Which of the following best explains why Nastasia displays an attitude of disapproval in line seven? Nastasia's mother is telling Andrew about her. Nastasia's teacher found her to be too talkative. Nastasia's mother continues to speak English Creole. Andrea is embarrassed by the speech of Nastasia's mother. Question 18. What is the language register used by Mrs. Jackson in the excerpt? Is it A, casual, B, frozen, C, formal, or D, consultative? Question 19. Which of the following is not an instant of the grammar of Caribbean English Creole? Is it A, talk, line six? B, come, line five. C, don't have no fridge, line one, All right? Or is it D, if we don't eat everything, lines one to two, all right? That's questions 16 to 19. Let's proceed now to question items 20 to 24. Let's go. Are you getting the answers? Are you seeing them? Are you understanding the questions? Feel you're gonna get um, do well on section B, right? Let's see, okay? Items 20 to 24. Read the following excerpts. So you'll see that there's a lot of excerpts that you have to read, okay? But, and of course, these excerpts covers the three areas that you will be tested on. Um, you would have studied and so it covers all three areas. All right, Jem, she called, Jem. The second bellow was meant with a timid reply. Yes, mama, the obviously frightened housekeeper responded. I am tired of telling you that you ought to make your presence known when I am around. But me never know that you is here, ma'am. Jem, 
don't you t don't tell me that the electronic car porch shutter makes far too much noise for you not to know that I'm in I'm home. We did we did not hear you, ma'am. Jem restarted titily as she descended the stairs. You see the print letter, mama, ma'am. Hear Jem say hair. There is an H on that word. Yes, ma'am, but me know you understand me, <laughs> right? Adopted from D. A. Harris, Bogan Villa, unpublished work, two thousand and seven. So twenty, question twenty. Based on how Jem and Mam use language, which of the following describes the nature of the relationship between them? Is it A, casual, B, formal, C, intimate, or D, consultative? Question 21. What is Mam's attitude towards the use of English Creole? Is it A, pride, B, shame, C, adoration or D, disapproval. Question 22, in the utterance, yes, ma'am, but me know you understand me. Line 11, which of the following areas of language is Jem focused on? Is she focused on? Is she focusing on pronunciation? Two, meaning, or three, lack grammar. So is it the answer A, one only? B, two only, C, one and two only, all right, or D, one, two, and three. Question 23, which of the following best describes you is here, right, <laughs> line five, is it A, bad language? B, a cause of subject and verb agreement. C, a good attempt at producing English Creole. Or D, a fail attempt at producing standard Caribbean English. Question 24, which aspect of Jem's speech is mom correcting when she says, hair, Jem says hair, Okay, right? Is it A, social? Or is it B, um, semantic? Or is it C, phonological? Or D, grammatical? And those are the questions for items 20 to 24. All right, how are you doing so far? Just that you are doing well, excellent. If you are, continue to do so. Question 25 to 27. Now it is important, therefore, that you look at the, the table. Okay, you analyze the table. Examine the following table, which displays the linguistic groupings of the four Caribbean countries, and then answer items 25 to 27. So it will be very crucial for you to look at the groupings. So you have Martinique, Guadeloupe, then Nevis, then Montserrat, then Cuba, then Puerto Rico, then Bonaire, then of course, Curacao. So the citizen of countries listed in column two are predominantly speakers of, and this of course, you'd have to understand all the language. So you need to know the countries and the various languages spoken there. So it would be, a, is it A, Dutch? Is it B, French? Is it C, English or D, Spanish? Okay, right? Then question 26 is, on the basis of language spoken, which of the following countries would replace Bonaire in column four? So you'd have to know again, the language are spoken in these areas that are grouped and that would now give you an indication as to which one would be more appropriate or suited for this question. Okay, good. Is it A, Sabah, 
um, B, Belize, C, Dominico, or D, St. Thomas? Question 27. In which of the following islands would a group of Martinicans be likely to encounter the least difficulty communicating with the locals? Is it St. Crux, St. Lucia, is it St. Vincent or St. Estasios? Yeah, and did I get that correct? If I got it correct in terms of the pronunciation, let me know. In the chat, if not, it's a miss, you know, I emphasize that. All right. <laughs> okay. Let me know. How did you do on that section? All right. Items 25 to 27. So it will be important that your teachers and you will go over the countries and the language spoken in each country. And if not, if you were not able to do that aspect, then you will revisit it. Okay, right? Do some research on it so that you're able to master this section if you are given questions that are similar in nature to this, this one here. All right, let's go. All right, so items 28 to 30. You see, it's a lot of reading, but you know, really make it a good man, they say, or a good woman. <laughs> All right, so items 28 to 30. All right, select the most appropriate answer for items 28 to 30. All right, which of the following would be best, be the best justification for the use of the Caribbean English Creole as language. Is it A, Caribbean English Creole can be used for every communicative function. B, Caribbean English Creole is used only for entertainment and casual interaction. C, Caribbean English Creole is Probably used by many people across the English speaking Caribbean, or D, Caribbean English Creole can be used by writers in novels and short stories. All right, so which of the following would be best justification for the use of Caribbean English as a language? Okay, all right. So, you know, what makes a language a language and all of those things would have been discussed with your teacher and teachers. And so you would have been able to decipher which of these, these options would be more or most appropriate. Which of the following factors does not critically affect the acquisition of language people speak in the Caribbean territories? Is it A, trade, B, education, and again, focus on the not. Is it A, trade, B, education, C, intelligence, or D, immigration? Question 30, which of the following is not a dialect of a language spoken in the Caribbean region? All right, so let's look at it. Is it Patois? Cre um, Creole, <laughs> all right, Creole or Creole, and then French, and then is is it Garifunga, Garifunga, right? Which of it is not? And again, you would have seen that question 29 is, an, there's a not in that question. And in question 30, there is also a not, okay? So you're looking at which is not. All right, the exception. All right, and then we move to items 31 to 33. How are you doing so far? You're yeah, answering the questions correctly. All right, you're putting down your response, jot them down, you know, because when we get to the answer sheet, we want to find out how well you did. Okay, all right, let's go. All right, so read items 31 to 33. Read the following scenario and then answer items 31 to 33. It is World AIDS Day and the students of CB College are attending a lecture. During the presentation, the students in the audience begin to frigid. 
All right. The speaker suspects that it is because of his presentation. Uh, let me read that again. The speaker suspects that it is because his presentation is not very clear and decides to make changes before presenting to another group. 31. What are some organizational features that a presenter could employ to ensure that a presentation is coherent? Is it one, clear topic sentences, two, clear thesis statements, three, transitional words? So is the answer A, one and two only, B, one and three only, C, two and three only, or D, one, two, and three. All right, did you get that one? Okay, question 32. So you're to write your response, you know, All right? And then we're going through the answers afterwards. Which of the following set of communicative behavior would best help the speaker to enhance his presentation? Is it A, the use of gestures, facial expressions, and vocals, vote, vocalics, or is it B, time management and distance from the audience, or C, the use of graphics and time management, or D, distance from audience, hairstyle, and facial expression? Did you get that one? <laughs> Did you get that one? All right, question 33. Which of the following would not be an effective medium if the presenter were to make a similar presentation to a group of first form students? Is it A, lecture and demonstration, dramatization, cartoon animation, or slide presentation? decide if it's A, B, C, or D. And then we're going down nicely, All right? Good. So items 34 to 35. How are you doing so far? You doing well? Yes? So let's go. Items 34 to 35. Read the following scenario. And then answer items 34 to 35. John is listening attentively to a guest lecture on short story writing. Shortly after the presentation starts, his teacher asks him to give the vote of thanks. John makes careful notes, which he uses as clues during the vote of thanks. Question 34, which method of presentation does John use in his speech? Paired speech, extempore speech, memorized presentation, or PowerPoint presentation? I think most of you got that answer correct, but let me not say anything. Not there as yet, okay. Is it A, B, C, or D? Then question 35. Which of the following communicative behaviors would John use to make his presentation effective? Is it A, standing erect on the spot? B, using different gestures? C, using a high-pitched voice? Or D, reading verbatim from his notes? All right, you decide, eh? Which one do you think he used? Is it A, B, C, or D? Let's, let's look at it. Items 36 to 37. Read the following scenario and then answer items 36 to 37. Tommy's younger brother, who is writing an essay on social studies assignment, you hear that? Social studies assignment, you know, asks him to look at the first draft. Tommy notices that the draft is poorly organized. 36 to 37, which of the following set of strategies would Tommy suggest that his brother use to improve organization of his essay? Is it A, statistics and clear um, descriptions? B, 
graphs and clear descriptions. C, clearly define main points and charts. Or D, clearly define main points and transitional words. As for question 36, did you get that one correct? Is it A, B, C, or D? You decide, okay. Question 37, which of the following technological devices would Tommy's brother use to improve the visual presentation of his assignment? Is it A, television? B, word, word processor? C, document camera? Or D, overhead projector? So you decide again, you're doing a presentation, which one you think you would use? Is it A, B, C, or D? You decide. All right. Items 38 to 42. Select the most appropriate answer for items 38 to 42. Question 38 reads, which of the following is an example of horizontal communication? You are not horizontal communication. Is it A, team members share ideas? B, managers set targets for staff? C, workers give feedback to managers? Or D, department heads give tasks to workers? All right, so you have to remember the organizational communication, right? And what you think an organizational communication would look like. 39, which of the following elements of her opponent's delivery would a debater need to focus on to make an effective rebuttal? Is it A, introduction, thesis, and conclusion? B, style of delivery, thesis and introduction, or C, thesis, main points and supporting evidence, or D, development, main points and supporting evidence. Question 40. An overseer's, an overseas student is asked to inform an assembly of students about our culture, right? Yes, I have exchange students, okay, All right? Which of the following reason best explains why visual aids would be an effective tool to use in our presentation? Is it A, they can serve as a record of the presentation? B, they can act as supplemental material for the audience? C, they can allow, listen to this one, they can allow the audience to participate in the presentation, or D, they help the audience to better grasp the information being presented. So is it A, B, C, or D? All right, just that you got that one correct, yes? Question 41, a young advertising executive is invited to address a group of Cape Communication Studies, or appropriate eh? Cape Communication Studies students on the advantages and limitations of advertising. What two elements of the communication process should he or she consider when planning the presentation? Is it A, decoding and perception? B, asso association and perception. C, conceptualization and encoding. Or D, conceptualization and persuasion. Question 42. You are a member of your school's winning football team. Yeah, that's why these other boys like to play football. You are a member of your school winning football team and you have been asked to make a presentation to students of another school on the value of sportsmanship, okay? Which of the following combinations would be most appropriate to hold the interest of your students? Is it A, skit and song, report and song, C, speech and poetry, or D, speech and video clips? 
how you doing so far? Liking the questions? All right. You see how realistic some of them are, right? Okay, good. Items 43 to 45. Read the following scenario and then answer items 43 to 45. Oh my, we're on the final lap. Very good, eh? It is the hurricane season again. And members of the Emergency Relief Organization are identifying ways in which young people can be mobilized to act as volunteers in the event of, an hur of a hurricane. How many of you have experienced a hurricane before? Yes, many of us eh, who live in the Caribbean would have experienced a hurricane, right? Maybe many, many years ago or even recently, okay, persons would have experienced a hurricane. So question 43 says, which of the following mediums a verbal communication would be most appropriate, most suitable for, apps, for attracting a youthful audience, right? Is it A, jingles, B, sign language, C, spoken command, or D, official documents, right? Talking about young people, which one do you think would attract them, right? Is it A, B, C, or D? Question 44. Which of the following mediums would be used for the members of the organization to encourage young people to volunteer, right? Is it one case studies showing the work of the organization to local celebrities endorsing volunteerism or three appeals made through schools, Red Cross groups? So is, it, is the answer A, one only? B, one and two only, C, one and three only, or D, one, two, and three. And here we are at question 45. Which of the following would, would not, again, note the word not, be helpful to the organization in ensuring continued youth participation? Is it A, staging a song competition in the schools? B, criticizing the work ethic of youth on public media, right? Or C, involving the young people in a mentorship program? Or D, encouraging families to participate in the organization's activity? Well, here we have it. All 45 questions. Trust that you did well on this. Okay, we will be providing you with the answers. Let's see how well you did. Jot down your answers, write them down. Yes, go over it. Yes, let's see how well you did. Okay. All right, so we'll be seeing now how well students have done on section B of that paper, okay? Trust that they did exceptionally well. Dog. Question 15, B, B as in boy. Question 16, A, A as in apple. Question 17, C. Question 18, A. Question 19, D. Question 20, B. Question 21, D. Question 22, B. Question 23, D. Question 24, C. Question 25, C. Question 26A, A as in apple again. Question 27B, B as in boy. Question 28A, A as in apple. Question 29C, C as in cat. Question 30C, C as in cat. Question 31D, D as in dog. Question 32A, A as in apple. Question 33A, A as in apple. Question 34B, B as in boy. 
Question 35, B, B as in boy as well. Question 36, D, D as in dog. Question 37, B, B as in boy. Question 38, A, A as in apple. Question 39, C, C as in cat. Question 40, D, D as in dog. Question 41, C, C as in cat. Question 42, D as in dog. And question 43, A. Question 44, D. And question 45, B as in boy. I trust that you have done exceptionally well. Now rank yourself, rate yourself. Did you get a ranking of say 40 to 45 out of 45 or so rate yourself see where you're at and that will determine the area that you need to focus on i trust that this presentation was most useful or helpful to you god bless you in your pursuit as you try to get your distinction as you get i should say your distinction in communication studies. God bless you.